All right, thank you. Uh, to the main singer, and my supervisor is Dr. Light and I'm presenting on the title of uh, Identifying Effective Approaches and the Uptake of Institutional Repositories Content in Higher Education Institutions in Zambia. The following is the order of presentation that I'm going to adopt for this study. Background, higher education institutions are, are, are essential for academic research in Zambia. However, despite the active research, we still face challenges. An, institu an institutional repository is simply a database with a set of services that is used to capture, index, preserve, and redistribute a university scholarly research in digital forms. That's according to... While there has been an increase in the number of registered higher education institutions and corresponding enrollment rate of postgraduate students, the online visibility of IR, it will result in gradual increase in uptake because more and more people are going to know about it. Statement of the problem. So Zambia has seen a steady increase in the number of higher education institutions. However, while there has been an increase in the number of registered institutions, the enrollment rates are still low. A common challenge encountered in higher education institutions is the significant gap between the research that is conducted by academic staff and the representation of this work in the IRS. Giving an example of UNSA, which has set up an IR for a considerable number of years uh, for, and conducted a number of research, the content that is deposited in the UNSA IR does not reflect its staff company. These studies suggest that higher education institutions in Zambia face challenges in terms of research output and online visibility. Hence, there is a need for more research to understand the objective. The main objective of this study was to identify effective approaches. improving the uptake of, to determine the uptake of scholarly resource output in IR six for depositing legacy content three to determine techniques that will ensure that effective use of self-archiving approaches the following are the research questions that were used in this study that actually mirror the research objectives significance of the study it's anticipated that the findings of the study will identify effective approaches and techniques that will ensure the effective use of self-archiving, thereby improving the uptake of IR content in the IRS. The following theoretical framework was adopted for this study. That's a diffusion of innovation theory. The theory involves an innovation that is communicated through certain channels over time among members of a social system. The study adopted this model because the expectation is that when you deploy an innovation such as an IR, it will result in gradual increase in uptake because more and more people are going to be using it over time. The following is part of the literature that was reviewed in this study. Okay, I'll go to the research methodology. The research design that was used is descriptive survey. The first objective, the target population for the first objective were the 11 high education institutions that have functional IRS. That includes the University of Zambia, Lusaka Apex Medical University, Cavendish University, Chalimbana University, Copper Dodge University, Kwame Nkrumah University, Mulungushi University, University of Lusaka, Zikas University, Information and Communication University, and Tedzilla American University. The sampling technique that was used is simple uh, purposive sampling. This is because we're interested in academic members of staff that have Google Scholar profiles in these higher education institutions. The procedure is that the thank you. The procedure is that the publications from Google Scholar were extracted using published or published software, while the publications from the IRS were extracted using the Open Archives Initiative Protocol in Octopus. The institutional repository uptake was computed simply by comparing the number of publications available in Google Scholar profiles against what is available in the IR. This is because many researchers will neglect to upload content to the IRS, but it turns out that quite a number of them 
we upload content to these publicly accessible databases, such as uh, Google Scholar, Academia.edu, ResearchGate, and PubMed. So it is for this reason that the study opted to use Google Scholar as part of the comparison for academic members of staff that have Google Scholar profiles. Data analysis that was used uh, was that this data was uh, analyzed by creating a spreadsheet for each sampled member of staff. Uh, the methodology that was used for the second and third objective, the target population, the target population included the 20 assist, uh, the academic members of staff that have Google Scholar profiles that have been identified in objective one. The sample size included 20 assistant deans research or people that are responsible for research, uh, 20 academic members of staff, 10 librarians who are responsible for managing the IRS. The sampling technique that was used is a simple, uh, is the purposive sampling. We was used to select academic members of staff who publish. And simple random sampling was also used to select academic members of staff who have significant differences in terms of their publications on Google Scholar against what they have archived on the IR. The data collection tool that was used is a semi-structured uh, interview guide. And the data analysis was thematically, thematic analysis. Limitations of the study, the recommendations were only to be generalized to the higher education institutions that share similar settings. And authors with affiliations linked to places where they did their postgraduate students were automatically excluded. In terms of the findings for objective one, this uh, uh, figure shows the in blue the number of the number of academic staff at the higher education institutions, and in red it shows the number of academic staff that have Google Scholar profiles. This figure shows the number of publications that are available in the Google Scholar profiles against the number that are no missing in the Google Scholar in the IRS. So in, terms of annual trend, thank you. in terms of annual trends, the annual trend and uptake in IRS has shown fluctuating rates. This is an, an example of the UNSA IR. Blue indicating the number of publications that are available in Google Scholar, and red indicating the number of publications that are missing in Google Scholar. Okay, we also, we also looked at the institutional repository uptake. So this graph shows the number of academic members of staff that have 0% of their publications in the IR. This is an example of the Zika's institutional repository uptake. In terms of objective two, strategies for blending legal content, the findings highlight several strategies, such as uh, training and support, automation of the deposit process, incentives for publishing, clear deposit policies, and guidelines. In terms of the self affiliating strategies, the study also found that uh, one participant said that through automating of the deposit process and the implementation of the IR policies. In conclusion, the fluctuating rates in IR uptake observed in the data suggest that IR uptake rates have not shown a consistent increase over time and have varied significantly. Establishing and maintaining functional IRs can enhance the visibility and accessibility of research, ultimately contributing to the reputation and success of academic work in higher education institutions. The following are the recommendations. Higher education institutions should embrace the highlighted strategies in the study to ensure that the missing publications are captured and ingested in IRS. It is also recommended that higher education institutions... All right, thank you. Okay.